Dan, thanks for joining us again on AYP. Of course, thanks for having me. Now, going back to those three elements, yeah. say them again. Light, timing, composition. Okay. There's, there is a fourth element, which is knowing your equipment so well yeah. that, they, that when those three things are lined up, you can get the shot. Right? That's exactly right. And the way that I explain it to students is if you're thinking about your equipment, it might not be the right equipment. So when I teach work photo workshops, a lot of times students come and they have new cameras, new lenses, and new software and new hardware. And the first three days of the Recipe workshop for disaster. is getting them over the equipment. So the complexity of the modern camera is both a blessing and a curse. Agreed. So you find the part of that technology that you need and forget all the rest yeah. and just go work on the light and the timing and the composition because if you're when i see students like this in the field i just go yeah you know it's like that's that's what you want is out in front of you that's a really good tip matthew jordan smith mentioned that you know when you're doing this and you're shooting and then you're my subject and i'm constantly looking at the camera yeah. i've lost my connection to you right? the first time i ever saw that i was on a set of another photographer who's a fashion guy very successful, had just gone digital and was at a conference like doing a shoot and showing people and I was watching the face of the model. And the second that he quit looking and talking to her and went to the laptop, she just zoned. I mean, it was like- Party's pff, over. Done. There's no more connection. And then she was good enough to where when he came back, she flipped up and, and started again. But the same thing's very true. Yeah. You, you don't want to chimp in front of people you want to be set and you want to engage because the, I think especially when you're doing things like portrait the dialogue is so much a part of the portrait and your body language is being read by the other person Completely. and especially everybody's dynamic is different is it I'm a male am I photographing some, a male or female the age I've done a lot of portraiture of kids kids are incredible they're way more fun to photograph than full-size humans they have no good side bad side they have no ego they will cry in front of me in a matter of seconds if they stub their toe or whatever and you get real portraits yeah. and I for the last like seven years of my career before I semi retired in 2010 I photographed kids commercially okay let's talk about children's photography because yeah. that's obviously a lot of people have kids yeah what are some tips that you could pass along about how to get those great shots well the first thing to do is make make them understand that you are not a normal adult because normal adults treat them, treat them in a certain way and talk to them in a certain way. I don't. And yeah. kids burn hot. So yeah. you're probably going to get 20 minutes where they are going to hit a range of emotion that you are completely unprepared for in a good way and a bad way. They could cry. They could laugh. They could do everything in between. So you've got to be ready. And to me, I looked at children's photography the same way that I do reportage or documentary is within this core 20 minute to 40 minute shoot, there's gonna be a handful of pictures that are really the ones that you want. Yeah. And so my goal with, with the work was always for prints on the wall. That's what I want because parents these days aren't printing very much. Yeah. They're saving things on laptops that are getting replaced and outdated and we're losing this family history. Kids photography to me too is if you're an amateur photographer and you think you wanna be a pro, a lot of times people will come to me and say, oh, I think I'm gonna shoot weddings. That's a risky business because a wedding is a, you can't go back. Right. And it's high stress, high money. People get a little crazy today when it comes to weddings. There's a lot of reality TV shows about weddings and stuff. Children's photography is, I think, is a great entry in mm -hmm. because you, first of all, you start to work with your own community. Yeah. When I shot weddings, a lot of times the clients are coming in from all over the place. Yeah. So the people in my neighborhood are the people that I'm photographing their kids. So you really become part of the community and it's so much fun. Yeah. Now you touched on a couple of things I want to just highlight here. So it, when we're talking about digital versus film, there yep. is, well, there's several important distinctions. Yeah. One is you have 36 exposures or 24 exposures or 12 exposures, yep. or if you're shooting a four by five, you have one exposure. Yeah. There's a, there's a, discipline that you learn from that. Do you find that that also carries over when you, I don't know, do you shoot digital? I all? do, I shoot digital. Do you find yeah. that you're still shooting as you would as a film? Absolutely, I have the mindset of a film photographer with a digital, mm -hmm. digital camera in my hand. There's two things I think are really important. You have to understand very quickly that overshooting every scene isn't helpful because there's the post-production side. I think you have to really master, get your workflow down, 
And when I say workflow, I mean from how you capture those images, what the settings are in the 5D3 or whatever you're using, to how those images are archived. Yeah. And archiving is the white elephant in the room that mm -hmm. no one wants to talk about, okay. but it is hugely important. There is no current solution for how to archive digital files, and that applies to not only the still photography industry, but Hollywood as well. Yep. You have to figure out your system. Everybody's gonna have a different system. And I learned a lot from guys like Peter Crow, who wrote the Digital Asset Management book. And Peter is a million times smarter than I will ever be, and also a lot more tech savvy. And I, his, his book was the only book I ever, technical book I've ever read in my entire life. And he got me thinking of a system and an archive and like thinking five years, 10 years down the road. And so the sooner you can do that as a photographer, the better. And it actually makes it more fun because yeah. you don't come back from a shoot and go, oh, I got to edit like 800 photographs. Dan, I want to thank you for coming here. And of course. Great interview. I love talking. I love talking about this stuff. I think it's important in the grand scheme of things. So I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thanks for everybody else for being a team. You bet.